While the first Harrier version has to be started from our catapult, it was time to design a retractable landing gear. And here is the same Harrier, first time on wheels. The landing gear is completely 3D printed and allows the Harrier to start from concrete and also grass surface. The physical gear design is inspired by the one I built for the SUX, but instead of springs we use nitrile rubber rings. They are available as set in a lot of different sizes. They got a super nice damping performance and are also very easy to install. The gear itself is 3D printed with PLA and reinforced with 1.5 mm carbon rods. Depending on the load, two or four carbon rods are added. These yellow parts are the retract adapters. They got two walls and are a lot more stable than the rest of the Harrier construction. For the first stress test, these adapters are bonded on a wooden plate and put to my rough surface machine. This is one of the first load tests of the Harrier 3D print landing gear. This is the normal load, about 1.9 kg on the main gear. And now we do a drop test. I lift it up 15 cm. It can hold more than a double till we reach end point. And now I will add one more of these black rubbers. Now there are three per side installed, so all together six. And we can see that it is much more stiff and holds more load. This will rotate. This was our first try without any carbon rod reinforcement and it breaks several times. Also using a metal spring was not the right way. The Aramid reinforced. Okay, it broke. Broke over there, just where the spring begins. There's not enough material inside. The new construction was super durable. I let it run for several minutes without any break. The shock absorbing of these little rubber rings are better than salt. Now it was time for the first terrain testing. There was just a little bit adjustment necessary on the outer wing retracts because there was not enough tension on the rubber rings but the other retracts were perfect from the first moment.
After finishing the gear testing, it was time to print the first Harrier VTOL version. This time there will not just be the shriveling ducting, also a complete leveling system should be installed. These are the new wing tips and we also did a lot of upgrades on the vertical stabilizer. It got a bigger rudder and also carbon rod reinforcement. And this is how our leveling system looks like. We got a 40mm EDF in the front and 30mm EDFs each side on the wings. And the system is completed by a 50mm EDF in the rear fuselage compartment. The nose and rear EDF are stabilizing the Harrier on the pitch axis and the wing EDFs are stabilizing for roll and the yaw axis. For this reason they are swivable and controlled by a servo. Besides the stabilization, these extra EDFs also give extra thrust to the whole construction to realize vertical takeoff and landing. Here is the test rig. I will use 3S HV LiPo and these modern Rowshot BA Heli ESCs. I start with the 30mm one. Because of their outer position far away from the CG, we will get a very good momentum that will stabilize the Harrier even on very windy and gusty conditions. And now the same test again with the 40mm EDF inbuilt in the nose section. This is the 50mm EDF inbuilt in the fuseless section. At the first run all sides are open so that uh, most air can get in and I will close step by step. Now most of the sections are closed. This is how it would look like also when everything is ready assembled. This area is from the gear door, the gear compartment. Here is also an opening so also from the rear they can get some air into there through the fuselage. So this is now a realistic rebuild. This 50mm EDF got just 500g of thrust because it was not good balanced but normally they got over 900g. The final takeoff weight of our Harrier should be 2900 gram for the VTOL version, so we got 700 gram plus to do a vertical takeoff. And this is how it works. The weight of all this technique is about 200 grams, and let's install it in the wing. Here we got the wing cabling, these are special lightweight cables. Here we got the 3D printed parts and here is the whole technique. These two servos are for the flaps, ailerons, swiveling the EDFs, retractable gears and all the cables and the ESCs, a lot of stuff. The swiveling nozzles are activated by a 9 gram servo, which is really fast and both sides work on the opposite direction. This means when one goes to the front, the other side goes to the rear to give it a very good yaw momentum. We extra use the small EDF to keep the aerodynamical changes on the upper wing side as small as possible. Here we can see the elevators moving, they are used for normal aerodynamical flight and directly hinged on the wing as one 3D printed part. 
on this VTOL area we are activating for the first time the flaps. They will be coupled with the nozzles and generate much more lift and also help for steep landing approaches. The wing became a very complex part of the area with all this retoil technique, but at the end we are very happy that just a little bit weight was added and everything works perfect. This is the new Harrier Vitor Fuse Lash. We added a lot of details, for instance a bigger ball bearing for a 10mm square elevator joiner. We also use super powerful micro servos which will reduce the weight. Here we can see the front EDF, the BEC and also the leveling battery. In the center of the fuse lash there is the flight controller. Here we can see the BEC and also the front EDF ESC and right behind the 3S high voltage LiPo for the leveling system. For the first moment we will use the KK2 board, later on we will test also other flight controllers. The Harrier is in the final stage. I think we need about two weeks for last modifications that are necessary to put in all this technique. Right over there the printers are running to print the final Vito version. In about uh, two weeks, I think, all the files are ready and we will upload them on rcjetprint.com. This was really a lot of work to make everything perfect right on this area, uh, but we are getting more and more happy with everything. Everything starts working like we wanted to and I'm so happy with our gear. That's for this video. If you liked it, you can support this channel by becoming my Patreon. There are also a lot of behind the scenes photos and a lot of more details. If you're interested in this, you find the link underneath in the video description. You also can donate via PayPal or buy me a coffee. I wish you a perfect week and see you in the next video. Bye bye.